Hello， 大家好，诶，我系 Sumar Great， and welcome to my little Cantonese corner。今日二零二二年三月十二号星期六 ，Today it is Saturday， the twelfth of March， twenty twenty two， and I'm so happy to be here. It's been a really long time before I've been able to sit down and do a video for Cantonese Corner without literally crying. Because, as you know, I've been back in the U.S. permanently. I want to say semi-permanently because I never like to say the door is completely closed. But I did leave Hong Kong in、uh, June last year, so I've been back for I don't know how many months. And at first, it was like kind of usual because. You know, we used to come back for maybe three weeks at a time over the thirty-three years that I lived in Hong Kong, and so for a while it was kind of like usual. I can do this. I can plan to do videos from here. Everything will be fine. But as I've mentioned in past videos, when you're in the U.S., it's like Hong Kong doesn't really exist, and when you're in Hong Kong, the U.S. doesn't really exist. So there was that problem of it was just easier to feel like Hong Kong didn't really exist because it's just so sad to have left Hong Kong. And、uh, so I thought today I would do just a really quick video to say I'm back. Maybe I'm hoping now to really be a lot more active. And I have to thank Robert Chung from、uh, Voice of America for that. He has been contacting me since November to do like a little article and on it, and that was published. And I realized through him that there's an entire、uh, community here in the states. Not that I, I mean, I really didn't know. There's a whole community in here trying to save Cantonese, and I thought I need to be a part of it because I want to be a part of it. Cantonese is the most awesome language ever. It's so much fun to learn. It's so much fun to speak, and I've really been working hard. Another big shout out to a student of mine、um, over in Cantolingo that really wanted to learn characters, and for the first time, I was like, I can do this. I can teach characters the way I learned them with a program that's just fantabulous. And so, I'm working on putting that character course together. Um, for you all,、um, especially those who、uh, know Cantonese but don't know the characters, it's a brilliant course. So I'm getting that ready.、Um, so anyway, I thought today I would just do a little video about why I left Hong Kong. So the number one reason why I left Hong Kong、uh, is because it was time. It just seemed time to leave and try to expand elsewhere. It was just a feeling that I had that I. Was a guest, and it was time for me to leave. And family played a big role in that because my parents here in the U.S. are getting older.、Um, the my kids were in the U.S. studying and then now working, and I just felt that it was a good time to leave. Of course, that also had to do with the national security law coming into effect, and just the basic feeling of restriction. You have to understand that in Hong Kong in the eighties, the seventies. I mean, Hong Kong since Hong Kong was Hong Kong, it's always been the most free market, free place ever. It was this amazing mix of East and West, and it, in all levels. And I'll I'll do another video when I really talk about how amazing it was in terms of that East West West mix. But since the divorce,、uh, when England. Uh, relinquished its responsibilities and gave Hong Kong back to the mainland.、Um, it's really been more about aligning with mainland values, with mainland politics, with mainland everything. Because the fact is that Hong Kong is part of the mainland, and that's something that we can't avoid. So you'll never really hear me say anything bad about it, because I really believe in just as most Hong Kong people do. It is the practicality. Of Hong Kong, that is something that is really amazing in my mind. It's just like you look at the situation, you see the situation for what it is, and you make a decision accordingly. So a lot of Hong Kong people with younger children,、um, the same thing happened in '97. Same thing, like younger children or having your children overseas. A lot of people emigrated to Canada, had their children there, so they have a passport. They were just kind of looking at the reality of the situation. If it goes bad in '97. Well, we have a backup plan, and so Hong Kong. You've heard me say this many times. It's just such a practical place, and so with that same mindset, looking at it like the practical, where the direction Hong Kong is heading,、uh, there was a lot of hope back in 1997, right during the handover, for hope for how things would be different, how China would 
potentially accept Hong Kong for the Hong Kong that it was. And, and they would complement each other in a way, the way that Hong Kong had complemented the Chinese community and the British community, the UK and the, the world community had, had come to this amazing East meets West kind of dynamic in Hong Kong. There was kind of that hope uh, that that same thing would happen with the mainland, that you would have this kind of new dynamic and it would be even better. I mean, that was the hope in 2000, 1997 and for a few years after that. But the honeymoon was quickly over when SARS hit in 2003. And then really it, it, it meant the floodgates were open because Hong Kong needed tourist dollars. And so once those floodgates were open, meaning that a lot more mainlanders were allowed into Hong Kong. And so immediately you're inundated with um, a different population. And so that, that caused a lot of uh, an immediate slamming against that brick wall of reality. Like, okay, wow, now we're faced with a new reality. And so without going into too much of the history, we are now in 2022. National security law was implemented in, I get the years mixed up now because with COVID, everything mixes together. But suffice to say, the national security law is now in place and it just became very apparent and evident that it's not a place where I felt free um, in the sense of not in the sense of not having to worry about what you're saying, about what you're speaking, about where you're going, about what you're wearing, about what, you know, all this kind of thing, all these, um, I guess you could call them self-censorship or silent restrictions coming into play um, is just not, um, it was just not what I wanted if I had a choice. So family first, of course. But the second thing was just realizing that maybe it's not really what I wanted. And also, too, you have to understand that Hong Kong is Hong Kong Island. It's got the peninsula and then the outlying uh, islands, new territories, all that kind of stuff. But there's one way. Okay, there's two. But really, for realistic purposes, for the average person living in Hong Kong, there is one way in and out of Hong Kong. And that is by plane. So right now, they, you know, in the years past, they started restricting flights to the U.S., flights to the U.K., flights everywhere. You couldn't really get anywhere. And that honestly kind of freaked me out because I'm like, I've always felt that. So you have to understand my personality. When I go to a restaurant, the first thing I do, especially in Hong Kong, because some of the restaurants are on upper floors and you take an elevator up to like the 10th floor and then you go to a hot pot restaurant with open flame. And so the first thing I think of is where's the exit and how am I going to get out of here if something happens? Not just me, but everybody. Um, and so that's something that is really important to me is that kind of freedom of movement. In fact, another little sideline here is I moved to Discovery Bay in 1990, my goodness, 1989, I think when I first arrived in 88. And by 89, I was, um, I decided to room with some friends that had moved to Discovery Bay. Well, Discovery Bay back in those days was nothing. It was literally nothing. It was the ferry to Discovery Bay. And you had, we lived in, I want to say it was Wood Green Court. It was one of the high rises up on the hill a little bit. Um, and that was in, I, I believe it was 89. It must have been 1989 or the end of 88, but I'm pretty sure it was 89. Anyway, so you took the ferry out there and the ferries did not run 24 um, seven. They didn't run even past like, I think 10 at night and you'd get there and it was pitch dark. There was nothing there except your bus that would take you from the ferry pier up to where you lived. And so that to me was like, oh my goodness, there's one way in, one way out. And that was the ferry, unless you're going to swim or there's, <laughs> it's, um, at least on Lama, you've got the option of sampans and different things that you can you can take to the villa to the to Lama Island. But so anyway, that's just all an aside to say that to me, it's really important to be able to move and to go different places. And um, that stopped. I mean, flights were stopped, and it, it just became very evident that Hong Kong is not a place I wanted to be stuck in because of a lot of different reasons. This is not as much, but the reliance on water from China. Um, the reliance on China for pretty much a lot of things in Hong Kong. So anyway, that was um, that's another reason why I wanted to 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 go was re recognizing the practical nature of leaving Hong Kong, um, which was, you know, even now I've got friends that want to leave and it's it's extremely difficult. People don't want to leave, so that was really a huge huge reason for me was that writing was on the wall. Um, 
there's so many reasons not to have left and I struggle with those every day and hope that I would go back there. But to live there full time again, I just don't know because it is an expensive place to live. And if you don't have a means of uh, supporting yourself in Hong Kong, it's very, it's very difficult. It still is very difficult. Uh, so that's another reason. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just really sad, you know, to have, yeah, see pictures. Like I said, it's like somewhere in time, you know, I'll open a drawer and see some money or um, pictures and stuff. And it's just like, I just miss so much about it. Um, the food, the people, the language, the the convenience, the technology, the um, everything, everything about Hong Kong, except the fact that you feel very restricted now and you feel um, like you can't leave. And so that's really the main reason why I chose to leave is because I, I could and I didn't want to get to a place where I couldn't. So that's about it. Um, I am so grateful to have this channel and this following and to even have people that are interested in talking to me or about me and what uh, experiences I've had in Hong Kong. I will do another video about these experiences that I've had uh, over the years because there's, especially working for the organization I worked for, uh, I'm not sure if a lot of you knew what I did, but I worked for the Hong Kong Jockey Club uh, since 1994. And I no longer work for them because, uh, again, there was no, that's another reason I left. There was no work and I could have stayed, I could have switched directions and stayed there. But then for the other reasons I mentioned, I decided to go. So yeah, that was a big part of it. I, I no longer had my job because we were working in events and different things that the club does for the community. And a lot of those have stopped for years now. And so there was really nothing that there was for me to do. And so, um, parted ways. But I bring that up because the Hong Kong Jockey Club is so integral to Hong Kong. And so I feel very fortunate and blessed to have had, to have worked at that organization that was so integral to Hong Kong society over the years. So I've had a really interesting uh, look at Hong Kong from that perspective. Not only living local, I was never an expat in Hong Kong. But um, living local, working for the organization that I did, speaking the language, um, reading and writing. Well, not so great at writing. I can, but I don't really write that much. So reading and speaking um, the language and really wanting to be a part from here or from wherever I are, if I, wherever I am, if I do choose to go back to Hong Kong or live, live somewhere else. Um, I definitely know that I want to be connected with the Cantonese community. So thank you guys so much out there. I look forward to collaborating with people and just um, just doing what I can to help, quote unquote, save Cantonese. Check that out, savecantonese.org. Um, and being more a part of the community. Thank you so much. And I will uh, see you again here. I'm going to be doing more videos as mentioned, and I'll be doing some more videos as well on teaching. And I'm revamping my courses to go on a new platform, as I mentioned in my community, um, community tab there. So a lot of exciting things happening and I'm just so very grateful. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you again next time here on my little Cantonese corner. Bye.